I hope you're all having a shining, shimmering, splendid day, and welcome back to my channel, mainly because I'm going to be reviewing the new MAC Cosmetics Disney Aladdin collection. I recently did a video reviewing the ColourPop Villains collection, and I asked you guys what kind of videos you'd like to see from me, just because I do have a lot of Disney videos, I have a lot of makeup videos, I have some other types of videos too, so I'm always kind of curious like what brings you back to my channel, and actually a lot of you guys said that you enjoy seeing Disney makeup videos, so I'm like, this is perfect because it's Disney and makeup. So in this video, I do a tutorial using the eyeshadow palette. It's the look that you see on my eyes here. I also bought one of the lipsticks as well, and I review both of them and just talk about what my thoughts are on that. I didn't buy the entire collection, mainly because I'm not really a huge YouTuber that can afford to buy every single makeup collection that comes out. I already do have a lot of makeup that I'm really grateful for, um, and there's a lot of things in this collection that just didn't really speak to me, and I just didn't really feel the need to buy. So all I bought from this collection are the eyeshadow and the lipstick. I do cover what's in the collection if you guys are interested, and I'll kind of go over why I didn't purchase it. It might be something that you're interested in purchasing, and I know there's a lot of other review videos already out in this collection, so I want to give you a heads up before we start the video. Video. Those are the two things I purchased and I do explain why I only purchased those two things and in the tutorial I mainly covered the eyeshadow but I do show you how to use a black liner if you're interested in buying that from the collection as well. So without further ado I hope you guys are all excited for this Disney Aladdin and MAC collaboration collection and let's get started. This is what the packaging looks like when you get the eyeshadow palette. I love the theming and this looks just like one of the dresses that Jasmine wears in the movie. I just think it's so pretty. So that's the packaging it came in. And then this is what the palette looks like itself. So again, it has that same pink color. And it even has, I'm not really sure what you would call that, but this shape right here, it looks like the buildings in the original movie and also in the new movie as well. So I love that theming that they have. It's really subtle, but so, so pretty. When you open it, there is a little bit of film this comes off, but just kind of protects the eyeshadow. So I'm just leaving it on. So this is what the shadows look like. I absolutely love all of the colors. I honestly probably wouldn't have purchased it if I didn't. There's been releases in the past for MAC that I just have cared not to purchase because I wasn't really crazy about the color scheme but they are a lot smaller than I would have thought they would be I think that's okay just mainly because like with bigger eyeshadow palettes I'm never going to completely go through an entire palette this one I think I'll actually get a fair amount of use of so we'll see even though it's limited edition just to show you guys a comparison this is a standard size for MAC lipsticks this is one of the lipsticks from the collection it's about the same length or same height as the eyeshadow palette. So you can see if it's about the same height as a regular MAC lipstick, if you guys kind of know what that looks like, because you can't really tell from the promo photos how small it is, but then getting it in person, I'm like, oh, that's pretty small. So for a close-up on the palette, there are three mattes in the palette. It's this one, this one, and this one. And then this one, it looks like it's a foil. It's called Rags to Riches. This one's also a foil called Princess Jasmine. This one's called Agrabah, also a foil. This one says VLXP, so I'm not really sure what that stands for. Some of you might know, um, but it's called Abu, like with an exclamation point at the end. Um, this one is called Creative Copper. It says it's an L, so I guess, I don't know what that is either. And then this one is Live the Genie Life, and it's F for foil. So on the back here, you can see it kind of explains what some of these are, and there's little initials next to some of the names. So I know M probably means matte, F means foil. Some of these other ones, I'm not really sure what that means, but that's what it looks like. I, as soon as I saw it, this shadow really stood out to me. I absolutely love it. I'm sure the camera is not doing it justice. In person, it's so sparkly, and it's just beautiful. I haven't done my right side yet, but this is, I put it in the middle on my left side so you can see that color is just so so pretty it's just very unique looking so I really like that color today for this tutorial I'm using all three of the matte shades and I'm also using this shade obviously and I'm using this in the inner corner I also use this shade as well underneath just to kind of bring some richness to the eye look but I'd say this is a great eye look for if you have a formal night like a prom these colors are so pretty and so neutral. Honestly, I feel like I could. this is timeless. I could wear this in the fall, spring, summer. Honestly, it's a great palette, so I'm so excited to share you guys this look today. Starting off, I'm taking the shade No Ordinary Lamp. In case that's actually No Ordinary Lamp, it's this light pink shade over here. And a big fluffy brush. And I'm just going to start blending that up into my crease. I'm not going to be super clean with this because I want to just get a nice base color. I'm mainly focusing on right above my crease, but I will blend slightly up into the brow bone area. 
Taking a slightly smaller blending brush, I'm picking up the shade Riff Raff, which is that kind of cooler brown shade, and I'm going to start softly working that into my upper crease. Now this color is significantly darker than the first color that we put down, so I'm going to make sure that I am blending it really softly, and I'm being intentional more with my blending with this one. You can see I'm keeping it pretty concentrated. And for this look, I do want to kind of create more of a round shape to my eyes. You can kind of see on this side it's more rounded as opposed to like pointy. So to do that, what I'm doing is really just kind of feeling out where my eyeball is and kind of curving that line. As you can see when I press down, you can really see where my eyeball is. So I'm basically just trying to over exaggerate that shape. So I'm not really going too far out of that because I really want to focus on that shape. And then when there's less product in my brush, that's when I go in towards the middle. But as you can see, as we add more product and start to slowly blend it, you can definitely see my eyelid shape better than you could before. And for those, I have hooded eyes are not like the most hooded eyes you'll ever see, um, but you can tell when I look down, like they definitely are hooded. Um, so by doing this, this really does help them pop more. Some people might not even need to do this um, step, but for me, I feel like to make my eyes appear bigger and also so you can really see their actual shape I do like to do this step now it's looking a little patchy over here so I'm gonna take a little bit more of that brown and just concentrate it I don't know about you guys but I've noticed my eyes too like sometimes certain spots won't pick up color like other spots will and I don't really see a lot of other makeup artists talking about this so maybe it's just me but I have a hard time I do have drier eyelids so maybe that's what it is but sometimes certain colors even though I didn't blend it weird, it just doesn't really pick up in certain spots. So I'm not really sure what to do to fix that. <laughs> and as a way to blend it even more, I'm going back in with that same first brush and that first color and just kind of starting up high to blend those edges together. But when I was first putting these shadows on my left side, I noticed they blended really well together. I've always been impressed with MAC eyeshadows. They're really high quality and I found that they're really easy to use. So if you're a beginner, um, I think this is a great palette. Yes, it is a little bit pricey, especially for the size of the shadows, but I think you can use it for so many different things, and it is pretty easy to use. But that's about as much as I'll do with these two shades before going in and adding that darker shade. So taking a smaller blending brush, this is much smaller, I'll show you in comparison to the last brush I used. In comparison to the last brush I used, you can see it is smaller, it's not super small, definitely more for blending because it is fluffy. So that's what I'm taking in that darker shade. It's called Shadowy Lady. So I'm just lightly tapping into that. I'm not like swirling it. I'm just kind of lightly tapping into that pigment. And this shadow is really dark, so you want to go in with it really lightly. It's going to be very pigmented. Um, and as I mentioned before, with darker shadows, they are harder to blend out. So when you first go in, you want to go very light-handed. So you'll see, I'll just kind of start to slowly pack that on. But I barely touched my eye, and that's how dark it is. Which is great. It's a beautiful color but means that you want to be extra careful. I don't know if you can tell, I'm barely touching my eye right now. Because I really want to concentrate this towards the lower section of my eye, lower outer corner. But yeah, that's pretty dark considering I'm barely touching my eye. I'm not even blending it yet. And I can tell I'm starting to get less pigment on my brush, so I'm going to start blending that upwards. But I'm going in really small sections, not sweeping this all over my eye. And honestly, from doing makeup for several years, that's kind of what I've noticed what makes someone a more advanced artist is they have more patience and they go in smaller sections and they're very intentional with their placement. I think I used to watch tutorials and just be like, oh, whatever, and just put it wherever. But when I'm more intentional with my placement and my blending, because right now I've probably done this motion about like 20 times. But it really does matter how many times you do it. It's not one of those things that like, oh, if I do it too many times, it's no big deal. You want to be intentional because as you can see, that color is already looking pretty diffused. So when you're watching tutorials, watch out how, how they move the brush. Watch how far they move the brush. Do they move the brush in a small section? Do they move it side to side or in circular motions? Do they move it all over the lid? That's what's going to help you in your artistry is just being able to observe that and also replicate that. And that takes practice is really knowing when to stop. I think that's how people get looks too dark too soon or they watch a tutorial and like, oh, it didn't turn out how I thought it would. 
a lot of that stems from just being able to really observe someone else and understand like how much they're blending. And that's why in a lot of my videos, they are a little bit longer. I'm okay doing that. I used to cut them short, but I think by showing you guys how long it does take me to do an eyeshadow look, how how much detail and how much patience I have when building up each color is, I think that will show you guys how much time you should be spending. And I think that's the problem when people create five minute tutorials and they just kind of pop on colors and show you guys that because you're not really seeing how long they actually spent on the eyeshadow look and seeing every detail. So if this video does turn out to be a little bit longer, that's why. And now I'm moving towards the inner corner or the upper section, the middle section. But as you can see, it's definitely not as much color. I'm even pushing down. Not super hard, but definitely harder than I was before. I'll take that second brush we used just to help blend out that shadow. And this was a practice round. I'm not crazy about how these shades kind of looked a little bit muddied. I think I went a little too crazy um, building up that color. So on this side, I am being more intentional. And that's okay. Like you can see directly how practicing the look a second time really made a difference in how it looks. This eye looks a lot smoother than this one does because I'm being more intentional with this side and where I place the shadows and how much I blend them out. So now that I have my shape down with my matte colors, what I'm going to do is pop on an eyeshadow primer and then start to put on some of those shimmer shades. The primer I love using for shimmery shades is the Too Faced Glitter Glue. It's a black one. There's two different Too Faced eyeshadow primers, but this one I've noticed really helps. You'll notice I have some creasing. I feel like it helps really smooth out my eyes, even though I do have some creasing because my eyes are slightly hooded. So what I'll do is take a little bit on the back of my hand and just kind of tap into it, and then just try to start to like really just pat that on my eye. You don't want to use too much of this because it will start to like, especially if you're already going on top of shadows, it will start to kind of like almost dissolve the shadows that you first put on. So you don't want to be crazy with this, but I'm mainly just popping this in the inner corner, kind of shaping out where my eyeball is again, and then going towards the middle section, but trying not to get into where we just put down those shadows. But as you can see, my eyes looking pretty, my eyes looking a lot smoother than it did before. And this primer does help to kind of smooth out your eyelid. I'm first tapping into this shade here. It's called the Rags to Riches the top center one. I'm just placing that right in the inner corner of my eye. Just tapping a little of that. And then you can continue to use your finger or what I'll do too, just to help me get into that inner crease. And just instead of like sweeping it, I'm really just patting it. If anything, I'm kind of dragging it in towards the middle to help me kind of almost cut my crease. This isn't a cut crease type look, but kind of is, slightly. But again, that middle section is still tacky, so I'm gonna try really hard not to place that anywhere. I don't see myself having that shadow. So I'm keeping this middle section open. I'm picking up that shade that I absolutely love called Princess Jasmine and just really pressing that on. And if you do go in towards a darker matte shade a little bit on the outer corner, it's okay. You can go on top of it, but if you go over into that area with the primer, it will be hard to blend those shadows together. This primer is really good for if you're stacking on pigment like I'm doing right now. That's what it's meant for. It's not really meant to be blended on top of. It'll make your eyeshadow look a little patchy. So it's this is a good spot too. What I do in this middle section is I kind of like to blend the colors on top of each other to create like a faded look but the shadows won't be as pigmented in this one section. So that's why I was trying to save some space. And that's why the only reason why I didn't go all the way across the eye with that first shadow is I really did want this shade to pop. So I wanted to not go over that prime section with any other shadow. I'll go in with that second brush and just kind of clean up any shimmer from that crease section. And then if it's a little looking a little harsh too between these two colors, I'll go in with that third brush Grab some of that darker shade and just start to blend these two together. And with this, I'm kind of just patting it on. I'm trying to blend these colors together. And then you can use the first brush or any clean brush just to kind of lightly, you don't want to press down hard, you want to go very light to wipe away any of that shadow that would have fallen down. And you don't want to brush side to side, you want to brush it away from the center of your face. You want to brush it outwards. So what I did underneath my eyes, I took this shade here. It's called Abu. 
the exclamation point. I can totally hear Aladdin saying that. And that same brush that we used to kind of pack on this inner corner shade, I'm going to just start lightly, lightly, lightly on the outside of the under eye area, start packing that on. I'm just going side to side with this as well. And then I will take the smallest amount of that dark shade called Shadowy Lady and just pop that in the outer far most point of my under eye area. Start to blend that. But by starting on the outside and moving inwards it creates a really nice soft fade. And sometimes too I'll even change the way my face looks. Like I'll hold my face at a different angle to kind of see where that under eye crease is and try to put the shadows right in that crease. Because sometimes if you're looking at it this way it might look a little bit different than when you're looking at it this way. Because it looks like it goes in a little bit right there. But here it doesn't, so I try to change up my face shape a little bit just to kind of see what the eyeshadow looks like from all angles, and maybe you'll see something differently. So that's it. I do think it looks better. It is a little bit lighter than the first time I did it because I did go a little heavy-handed with some of those darker shadows. But overall, I feel like the blending on this side doesn't look as soft as it does on the right side. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with I went a little bit slower and had more patience with this side. So you can see... I did the exact same shadows, I did the exact same placement, but really just in the blending alone you can see the difference on the left side compared to the right side and overall how that looks and it has a different look to it. This does look a little bit diff darker, it doesn't look as diffused as the right side does because I did kind of put too many shadows on this side and built them up too much. Whereas this time I only went in with a couple passes, I only did maybe about one or two layers of the darker shade, whereas this one I did maybe about four. So you can definitely see a difference. So even just using the same shadows and the same techniques, the eyeshadow could look different every single time. So that's why a lot of it has to do with practicing. So I'm not gonna put on lashes today. I'm just going to wear mascara. But first what I'm doing is curling my lashes. I got this Pure Cosmetics eyelash curler in my BoxyCharm this month. And I feel like it does such a nice job curling my eyelashes. And then I'm taking my Thrive Cosmetics mascara. I love this mascara. It's so pretty. I use it on this side and my lashes look so long. So with mascara, I kind of just start at the roots and softly blend upwards. And I'll also take the brush kind of vertically too if I want to build up certain sections. And what I like to do too is I like to have my lashes in the inner corner and the outer corner kind of go in different directions. So in the inner corner, I'll kind of brush my lashes up into the left if it's on my right eye because I want to brush it towards my nose. The middle ones I'll just kind of brush straight up and then on the outside I'll kind of brush the lashes straight out. I feel like this really expands my lashes as much as possible and does a really nice job of flaring them out too. And then I usually like to use a smaller um, mascara for my bottom lashes, but I don't have one, so I'll be using the same mascara. I'll just um, use the first pass on my upper lashes, and then when there's less product, I'll go on underneath. I found that if I have too much product on my under eye lashes, they just look really clumpy really fast. I try to just look straight ahead for this, but I have really long under eye lashes, which I'm very thankful for, but sometimes they overpower my top lashes and look really silly. So I'm just putting enough mascara on them just so you can actually see them, but not enough where it's like, they're pretty intense. And then one last thing I'm doing in case any of you guys are interested in buying the liner from the collection, I am going in with a black liner. This is from Thrive Cosmetics. I've used it pretty much to nothingness, um, but I wanted to include a black liner in case you guys were interested in purchasing that, just so if you wanted to, you could use that in this look as well. Basically what I'm just going to do is just tightline my waterline and go underneath my lashes with this liner. And this is what the finished eyeshadow look looks like. Moving on to the lipstick, this is what the packaging looks like, and again, I absolutely love it. I just think it's so pretty. I love the peacock feather details, and one thing I like about this collection is what you see on the packaging is also on the product itself. So, I'm weird, but I love, like, packaging, how things come, so it's kind of sad when you have to, like, throw away a box as pretty as this, but it is nice to know that, like, they'll look like that on the product itself. Um, this is in the shade Princess Incognito, so I didn't buy any of the other lipsticks. Um, I just have a lot of lipsticks, and so I didn't really need all of them, so this is the only one I bought because I'm like, hey, I see myself wearing that 
pretty consistently. So this is what the packaging looks like. Again, like I just mentioned, it does have the peacock feathers on it. Actually, I'll zoom in so you guys can see it better. So there you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, it is looking a little bit reflective right now just because of my lighting, but hopefully you guys can tell there are peacock feathers kind of like etched into the lipstick tube, which I think is so pretty, and it has Aladdin on it as well. So I did actually put this on earlier, so it's not like the cleanest lipstick, but I love this color. I think it's so pretty. And now I just feel like it's a really great shade. It is more of a nude color, but it almost has a little bit of brown in it or mauve. It's not super pinky. I mean, it's kind of pink, but it's not like the pinkest nude that you've ever seen. So I love the color. I feel like it even complements the eyeshadow well, even though the eyeshadow is a little bit dark. I feel like it works really well together. I look super pasty right now. I think a lot of that is just my lighting and the coloring, but I love this lipstick. I think it's so pretty and I can totally see myself wearing this color. All right, you guys, so that is it. Let me know what you think of this tutorial um, reviewing it. I really do love these eyeshadows. It is kind of pricey. It's $30 for the eyeshadow palette. I, I think when I was buying it, I didn't know how small it was. So I did think that was a little bit pricey, but I think this is something that a lot of people can use. I know um, a couple of people were kind of surprised that they didn't include like a fun teal shade. I mean, obviously Jasmine in the first movie, that's such an iconic color to associate with Jasmine. But I've noticed in this new movie, the way they do Jasmine's makeup, even in the first movie though, she didn't really wear any bright colors for her makeup. So in this new movie, I've noticed her eyeshadow and her eyeshadow looks are very very natural. They're very minimal. So I think this eyeshadow palette really does complement the character and what makeup she wears in the movie as opposed to having like colors that are kind of inspired by Jasmine. If you want a Jasmine inspired tutorial, I do have one up my channel. I'll link it down below, but that one I do use some more blues and teals, colors that you wouldn't see Jasmine wearing, but colors that really do evoke like, oh, like I see that eyeshadow and I know that's Jasmine kind of thing. So I do love this eyeshadow palette. I love the lipsticks. For me personally, this is the only one I bought because that's the only one I really see myself wearing. I'm not one to wear lots of bright colors on my lips, but I do like that because I do feel like Jasmine does wear more bold lips in the movie, so I'm glad that they include those shades. Going into some of the other products I didn't purchase, I don't really need a highlighter or a blush right now, so I didn't purchase that. I don't really care for glosses too much, so I didn't purchase those either. There's the eyeliner. I have uh, several eyeliners. I don't need another black eyeliner, and I think that's all. You can. Oh no, there's like a there's a gloss thing too. So it actually looks like it's like a blush or an eyeshadow. It's in a circular kind of like pan and it's a gloss. So again, I'm not crazy about glosses. So that's why I didn't purchase it. But with the things I did purchase, I am really happy with it. Again, this is a full-size MAC lipstick. It's not smaller. It's the same price as a regular MAC lipstick. And I feel like this is a shade I would wear a lot. So I really do like that. And I do love the eyeshadow palette especially if you are looking for a palette that's neutral because some of those shades you could wear by themselves in the daytime. You can obviously glam it up for a night look or even for prom. I think it's perfect. So yeah, I'm really happy with it and I love it. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!